match. Um, obviously, we've got uh, two Division One teams here, um, so it should be a pretty high-level game. Um, and while we're waiting for the teams to ban, let's start the Revlo bet. Oh, production value. Can we talk about how awesome Fausto Phil Bogd logo is? I mean, look look at that beauty. It's, that, it's, that's smart. I mean, smart I mean right your, your profile picture is obviously the, the most beautiful of all casters, but mm -hmm. like their logo is just amazing. Their logo is pretty special. That is for sure. Um, okay. Vala first pick. This, this has to be some sort of uh, uh, target ban because uh, you don't expect it. And then a Muradin first ban as well. I mean, that, that that's like teams actually doing research. What's up with that? I, I was the only person uh, qualified to do research in, in Heroes Lounge, apparently. I'm, I'm pretty sure that Shensha is a bit of a Muradin beast. And you can actually see he has said, uh, uh, in response to the Muradin ban, they would like to forfeit the game. Um, uh, uh, actually, Muradin is uh, one of the best heroes on this map. People have uh, neglected Muradin a little bit with ETC and Diablo coming up in the meta, Varian especially. But mm -hmm. Muradin was always, always so strong on this map. There, there was that summer championship to 2016. Uh, when when the Korean team won, especially thanks to Muradin, he's he's just such an amazing um, amazing hero on this map. I think. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, now, I mean, obviously, these teams. I I believe that these teams actually did play against each other during the season. Um, I, I'm not quite sure, but I uh, believe yeah, that I, the case. I think they played in latest the Minari one. Yeah, uh, so I mean, they the case, they yeah. do know something of each other's styles. They they may have even scrimmed together as well. Um, so I mean, I, I can certainly understand them having some knowledge on what to expect from the other team. So Natus picking up the well, firstly, Fostad still bugged, picked up the Tychus mouth. Uh, very solid early pickups. Tychus just a very safe pickup all round, and mouth is probably the best. Uh, early game and all-round rotational healer, with the, the roots being such a powerful tool. We do see Varian being picked up then from Natus Dominari, and interestingly they've gone with a Gul'dan rather than something highly bursty that can capitalise on that Varian. So it'll be uh, interesting well, to see. Definitely looking to pick up something later on. I just, their options might be limited, but mm -hmm. uh, um, I mean, even false that might not be a bad idea. I might be looking forward to seeing uh, Hammer. Hammer works pretty well here. Yeah, Hammer can be very strong on this map. Um, if you can just set up a, a three-lane push group, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. he can be, she indeed can be pretty devastating, um, very difficult to to deal with. Um, so we do see the Greymane ban coming in. Uh, he has been popular recently. I think the new cursed bullet is is pretty powerful. It's interesting. So they've banned, uh, they picked Tychus and they've banned Greymane, both like classic percent damage uh, heroes. I wonder whether there's a specific plan. Um, They're like talking Chogal? about Gal, right? <laughs> oh, I don't think Chogal Malfurion works that well. No, uh, I don't but, think it does uh, either. The Diablo is fun. definitely in, in the option right now. Yeah, could well be a Diablo, uh, and I suspect they are looking at a double tank uh, type setup. Yeah, I mean, so. uh, the double tank is obviously the matter right now, unless uh, you're playing Silver League, uh, Hero League, where <laughs> a double tank obviously equals a loss because you don't have enough DPS. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, you need to have at least three assassins, you, preferably uh, all ranged. I ideally, you want four assassins and you want all of them to be ranged to maximize your DPS. <laughs> Um, so ETC, very strong pickup. Don't know if they'd go ETC and Diablo here. They go for the Tassadar. Okay. Um, I mean, I, I love a Tassadar. I think uh, it's uh, very Tassadar powerful. is just overall strong right now. Like even mm. even if you pair him with Gul'dans and stuff that might not be like traditional Tassadar stuff, he is just super strong right yeah, now. Yeah, and with, I mean Tass uh, Tychus is Tassadar one damage. of those classic pairings um, that has traditionally always done performed very well come on guys uh only three minutes left to put your bets in uh so far only people betting on it is dominari 
which uh, um, opens up some chances for pretty greedy payouts if you bet on Hossa Tilbug. <laughs> uh, the, the only reason I would like uh, Hossa Tilbug to win the next two games is, other than actually casting two games, is the, the epic interviews Popcorn always gives. He does love to give uh, some shade in those interviews, that's for sure. <laughs> um, so we've got Sergeant Hammer Oriole coming in from Natus here. So Called it. One, only one uh, warrior tank in, in the variant. Uh, and obviously he's it's, quite weak in the early game. Uh, yeah, but it's fine with Ragnaros. I mean, he, it, it is level 13. He's, he's pretty tanky mm -hmm. when, when it comes to ETC. So it's, it's I think, fine. Uh, yeah, no, absolutely. It can certainly work. Um, <laughs> Chat very excited about the hammer. Um, quite understandably, and and I mean they do have both Greymane, sorry, both Gul'dan and Hammer to feed their Oriole. So yeah, I mean that's Oriole. got a lot of potential. So, even Ragnaros is actually a pretty pretty good hope giver because uh, I wonder if Chromie is the right pickup for Falstaff still bugged here. They go with the Anubarak, uh, giving them a Anubarak heavy is a line. decent pick. I mean he yeah. he he gets. Uh, he doesn't take that much damage from Gul'dan, and most mm -hmm. of Ragnaros' power is ability power. Mm -hmm. Most of Absolutely. his damage, so it's it's fine, I guess. If he can he engage does get well on shredded Oriole, by Hammer, fine. is is the only problem I would see, or potential problem I would see for him. Well, um, he he can dive the Hammer, and uh, when when you dive the Hammer, he can't do much. Sure. So you know, if if they coordinate it well, it uh, it should be fine in theory. Yeah, okay. I mean, but you know, you've got <laughs> you've got Hammer knockback, you've got the Oriole knockback. You've got Varian stun. If the Anubarak dives in on the hammer, there's always the risk that they will be able to just manage, uh, sort of handle him with, with crowd control uh, and blow yeah. him up. I always forget uh, in Division 1 teams, you can actually expect people to hit their stuns and, uh, <laughs> and abilities. So it's, it's, it changes the draft drastically, people. Trust me. <laughs> yes. Yes, it does. <laughs> um, okay. So we're loading up into the game here. Uh, it will be interesting. I mean, Natus obviously, as as we have been told, unfortunately we didn't get to see it, did show a pretty dominant performance in the first first map of this series uh, on Tomb of the Spider Queen. Um, so, yeah, it'll be interesting to see whether they can make this comp work. They've definitely got the harder to execute comp, I think, here on the side of Natus. Um, but it's got a lot of power for sure. Yeah, that's definitely true. As, as I said earlier, even Ragnaros is a pretty decent uh, hope giver for Oriole. And mm -hmm. that's actually very important because like, when you draft Oriole and you bag on one person giving you hope, the moment that person dies, you are in trouble. Yeah. And here I yeah. think uh, this should be fine. Everyone except um, Varian should be fit for the job. Indeed. So we are now into the game. Uh, and on the left-hand side, in blue, we do have Natus Dor Dominari, the Bedman on the Ragnaros, Hockey Jedi playing Oriole, um, Aradaval on the Sergeant Hammer, Shensha on the Varian, and Frydod on Gul'dan. And on the right side, we have Fosfor Phil Bagdu with Popcorn on Tychus, Snow Kid on Tessadar, Camp Fast Hamster on Malfurion, Altarion on ETC and Slays on Anubarak. Okay, and we're going into the game. One thing I didn't mention in the draft is that uh, Vossad Stillbug don't really have a solo lane that's going to be good against the Ragnaros. They are sending the Anubarak up into that solo lane, and they are setting up a bit Anubarak of a Anubarak actually here. might do a decent job with uh, with Dampen Magic. He should deny most of the damage from Ragnaros, so he, he can actually delay the lane and do pretty well, I think, with the This is a 4v5. Um, Falstead still bugged, went in pretty aggressively, even though all members of the other team were there. Uh, nothing really ends up happening. Both teams are able to get away okay. Um, Oriole getting locked down, uh, but the Varian is locking down the mouth, but is falling very low. Yeah, and that CC is going to lock down Varian and going to get a kill for uh, Falstad still bugged there. 
So the rotation going slightly in the favour of Foster Still Stillbug. Frydog getting caught out now, uh, and the route is going to be for sure enough to finish him off. They didn't even need the roots. The power slide gave them enough CC to lock him down. Now, we do see in the top lane, Nubarak is struggling uh, against the Ragnaros here. And Noob's been forced to use his tap to keep himself sustained in the lane. Uh, Rag has not yet. And that is now both top and bottom shrines channeled by Natus Dominari. Um, Looks like Falstad still bug rotated bottom quickly enough to recap. We, we that. also do have the um, betting overlay still up. Which ah, yes. Removed, I'm sure. Oh, it will be. Uh, meanwhile, Varian goes down mid lane. The problem here is that um, the hammer is a great pick and forms a very strong tri lane bot. But you very need mobile. to keep someone. Yeah, you do need to keep someone in the mid lane, which. Hammer is unable to rotate, so mm -hmm. it comes down to if you can actually do some siege damage on those towers. If you can, then you will be in, in trouble. Yeah, absolutely. I, I almost feel like uh, Gul'dan would have been the better choice for the mid lane with Varian actually protecting the hammer. Yes. Um, giving that a bit of kill pressure to that four man. Although I mean, we did see the rotation kill Gul'dan earlier as well, so it's not like he's safe against a three or four man rotation. Uh, yeah, unless he, he's he playing save, very but defensively, he can, he can uh, clear the he can clear the um, the wave quickly on yeah, the yeah. lane sitting behind the towers, and that's uh, that's something he should focus on. But uh, it would make his stacking. It. Oh no, he's gone for the cubo, apparently. This is interesting. Uh, I hadn't uh, yeah, I haven't had a chance to actually look at the talents yet. Varian getting caught by the rotation again takes a lot of damage, but not quite enough to kill him. Um, interestingly. This was an opportunity. Varian could have got the Dragon Knight here, I think, if he'd run straight uh, to the channel point. Um, we took a little bit of time. Can show the talent on the on the main screen, can't we? Yes, I, I am now Even showing the talents. Even though talking about them. Yeah, yeah, I'm showing the talents. What did you do without the co-caster, man? I, I was already showing the talents. So. <laughs> um, so we we do have the queue on the. Gul'dan, as you say, uh, into the improved life tap rather than consume soul. Rag's gone for both the stacking quests. Uh, looks like, again, Falstead still bugged. They're going to get a catch uh, with that four-man uh, mass rotation. Just picking somebody off and singling them out. And they don't have a lot of burst with the Tassadar, the double support setup, but they've got enough. Uh, Hammer getting locked down, tried to just stand and fight. Um, but Oriel not able to generate enough hope to keep him up there against the four man. Uh, so that's another kill now. Five kills for nothing. Yeah, and that is about a level's worth the, of XP. I think the huge problem for Nitis Dominari will be um, the fact that uh, Gul'dan has gone the Q-Belt. And that means a very short short range one. That's yep. good against uh, the double front line of course. But you really need to get in there to actually generate that hope. Uh, I think the idea of this is that the hammer uh, will be the siege and will force uh, the Falstad Steel Bug team to make the engage themselves. And then the Gul'dan with the Q build is much better at defending the hammer. Um, I'm pretty sure that's their plan. Yeah, that, that, that it should generally be the plan. They, they are really good with... Um, Sustained damage, mm -hmm. so they should win those prolonged fights. But if they can get bursted, we even see. Uh, I mean, Tychus is a decent hero for getting bursted. They have a lot of CC. Uh, they are winning so far, which yep. is uh, a bit surprising for the early game, I think. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just those pickoffs that they've been able to achieve due to the immobility of the hammer and how that's sort of anchored the team. Uh, of uh, Natus uh, Dominari. That's one of the mistakes hammers tend to make uh, siege up is uh, generally something you don't want to do regularly. We see yeah. hammer again getting picked off now. Yeah, and that was just again, it was a power slide into a bunch of damage from the Tychus and, uh, and the rest uh, of the team. ETC going very hard, does get the mosh, but he's going to fall. Uh, and the fort is, oh dear, this was a very big overextension by Fossil Steel Bugs. 
going to lose the mouth as well and the Tassadar. So that is uh, purely due to them getting very over aggressive. They had the tens uh, and they wanted yeah, to capitalize on it, and I appreciate that. But uh, they dived hard under the fort uh, when they didn't have minion support. And ETC had taken way too much damage by the time he cast his mosh pit. So, we do see the dragon going up, which is uh, probably a bit of a mistake. I mean, that, that top lane is irrelevant, I think, on this mm. map. It's very hard to actually win through the Bridge of Death. So yeah, no, it's... We usually want to go the mid or bot lane. And, it's uh, allowing... No, the, the reason he's gone top lane is to allow the hammer to get a solid push in the bot lane. Um, and yes, although it's irrelevant in terms of win condition, the XP from getting that fort and getting that wall early uh, can still have value. Um, but they are going to confirm, I yep, think, the bottom lane. Uh, yeah. Try lane. You, you wanna you wanna use the dragon to distract because you essentially have two pushing lanes mm -hmm. and you can't ignore the dragon. However, Tychus is pretty well equipped with generally dealing with the dragon. Yeah, but I mean, even through initially a three-person defense in the top lane, um, Natus have managed to clear the wall uh, with the dragon and there. get the whole fort and get the whole fort uh, in they, the bottom. They got lane, the yeah. whole fort bottom. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so. the, wall, the wall I stop is just a distraction, it's completely irrelevant, I mean, you can farm it for XP, but you, you don't really need it, because again, you, it's very rare to win that way, but the bottom fort is key here, I, I think that will be very important, now they can't fight for the... Uh, oh, torn into Sulfurous Smash on the Malfurion, and he falls very low, but does manage to get away, a uh, lot of damage now coming out, um, but Varian is going to be the first to fall, Hammer not able to put down quite enough damage to finish anybody off. Uh, they've got a lot of sustained damage, but a relatively little burst damage uh, for Natus Dominari, and that did cost them in that team fight. They weren't able to actually focus anyone down, uh, and obviously through Tass and Mouth healing, uh, that does get much harder anyway. So another one for zero, just a sort of a pick off on the Varian there. Uh, and Falstad still bugged, definitely saying, um, yeah, we, we clowned that team fight, but we, we're not done yet. Um, so, pleased to see that. Big power slide, the Mosh cancelled, um, but cancelled before it triggered. Horrify does hit ETC and Tychus, uh, but Oriel getting silenced and locked down. Um, gonna force out the Aegis, and that's the Mosh onto two. Um, another interrupt on the mosh there, and a lot of people falling low, but nobody actually falling at this point. Um, we do just have both teams now pulling back. Shrines coming live in about another 10 seconds. Uh, level 13 locked in for both teams. Um, so it's going to be... It's going to be interesting to see who can come out on top on this shrine phase uh, and pick up the next Dragon Knight. You back, dude? Oh, yep, I'm back. Cool. It's just uh, pleb internet and pleb PC. Nothing to worry about. No, no, I, I know. <laughs> uh, it's, so, it's, uh, but bottom shrine has been captured by Falstead still bugged. Um, but Ragnaros is still dominating that top lane. We do now have Tassadar instead of the Anubarak. Uh, oh, big lockdown chain onto the mouth. Ice Block comes out in order to save him from some of that uh, chain CC. Lovely cleanse. The Horrify went down on one person but got cleansed immediately. Um, we do have Falstaff still bugged. Probably coming out on top uh, in that team fight. They did use laser and uh, the the locust swarm, so they used uh, more ults than uh, Natus Dominari, but they forced some backs. Uh, that's going to make it. That's not actually going to give them an opportunity to pick up the Dragon Knight here. Uh, they're just continuing with their four-man rotation group. Uh, making sure they're picking up XP from mid as well as the bottom lane and leaving the Tassadar to just soak against the rag basically. Um, quickly looking at the Tass talents we do see the uh, 
shield, the regen globe quest at one, uh, and then movement speed at four, which is uh, obviously a reaction to the nerf. Um, not not super synergic with the team comp that they've got there, because uh, they don't have any melee assassins really to empower. Sophia is smash being used just to try and get out safely. Uh, oh, that's awkward. Uh, the Mosh did catch the Ragnaros, but Tychus Grenade actually knocked the Rag out of the Mosh and allowed him to escape. Meanwhile, mm -hmm. Natus Dominari pick up the uh, Siege Camp, their opponent's Siege Camp, in the bottom lane here. Going to get them some pressure onto that keep wall. Uh, meanwhile, we do see a bit of a scrap. Massive Horrify going down on three man there, uh, but Tychus is going to manage to get out. Okay, but we do now have both uh, top and bottom shrines channeled by Natus Dominari, and they are looking to try and cap the shrine, the, the Dragon Knight here, but not going to be allowed. Uh, Falstead still bugged, still contesting that. Forced out the Aegis by putting a lot of damage on the Oriole, um, but it is actually the Ragnaros that they pick off. Mouth falling very low to the Varian, but Varian's sort of out on his own. Uh, and between the Tassadar shield and Mouth healing himself, he is going to stay up here. Um, with the kill going down there, Falstad still bugged, are looking to try and channel the shrines. But ETC needs to back out of there fast because there's been a four man rotation uh, to the top lane. Uh, and he's going to get chunked out uh, very oh, rapidly. Falstaff well, still bugged our 16, and it is Dominari just got their 16. They are uh, picking big them up root now. comes down, but no follow up to it there. Uh, <clears throat> do you see Rag been a little indecisive, not sure whether he's going top or mid. Does end up going top. Uh, Mouth getting locked down and will be taken out there uh, with no answering kill just yet. Uh, they managed to lose Malf in a 4 versus 5, that's uh, mm -hmm. pretty unfortunate for them. Um, I, I, I think they mispositioned a little bit there, and yeah. losing uh, uh, support is definitely um, time to go out to the fight. However, an Uberak might have got caught, but he managed to brew out. Uh, they just want to stall now until uh, Malf is back. back. Yeah, and, uh, uh, and that is the we want to be really aggressive right now and try to capitalize. And they're and doing the exactly they that. Hammer down. sieging up this top fort. Um, the minions are going to get taken down very quickly, but uh, Hammer is going to need to retreat, but he's done about three quarters of the damage to that fort in the top lane there. And we do see Falstad still bugged. Looking to pick up their bruiser camp here. Um, Nobody from either team has ventured into the bottom half of the map, which has been quite fortunate for Falstad Still Bugged, as they have just continued to control that uh, bottom shrine. Um, well, I mean, that's obviously a bit of an advantage to them, but if you can't really capitalize on that with uh, the top shrine and the uh, center one, it doesn't really mean much, and they are regaining it now, so it should be fine. Yep, so s swapping control, um, Falstad still bugged and moved over to the top side of the map. Natus Dominari have all sort of gravitated towards the bottom side. They are rotating to this mid lane, however ETC coming in uh, tries to get the mosh off, but it is interrupted again. Uh, Sulfurous smash lands on two players. And the Horrify follow-up, not quite enough to take out the mouth, but he will fall uh, he to down. the Varian there. Um, and that's again one for nothing. Uh, Natus Dominari managing to get the pickoffs in his later fights. Yeah, Mafirin especially has been uh, caught out of position several times now. He He's uh, the top feeder in their team. And uh, it's it's really hurting them uh, uh, at the moment. He he needs uh, better protection and better positioning. I feel like with two tanks and uh, and the Tassadar, he shouldn't be going down like that. He's getting dived very hard. Is is what I was. Yeah, saying. I mean that, that that's um, true. But uh, I mean he should be staying a little bit more back. 
yeah, perhaps so. Uh, you know, he's getting he's getting uh, Varian charged and Sulfur smashed a lot. Um, but that is a very difficult combo to avoid if you want to be in a position to be effective. So uh, I'm not quite sure what what the answer is. I mean, it's not like a Malfurion has talents to allow him extra range on his abilities and uh, allow him to stay back more. You, you need to get those other attacks in. <laughs> Uh, so Rag getting caught out here, and that's a CC chain, but the Aegis does come down on him. Uh, Mosh to interrupt, uh, and Rag goes down, but so does ETC, and Tyker's getting a taunted. A resilient flame did the job here, it yep. allowed him to survive long enough for ETC to go down. So and that's I really think all they four members well. of False Dead Still Bugged falling very, very low uh, on HP. They are going to concede the Dragon Knight over to Natus Dominari here. Uh, well, I mean, they don't really have a choice, but I, I don't think it's still critical. Uh, they are even in XP. Obviously, Natus Dominari will gain a little bit of an advantage here, but I don't think they can do much. They can hope for a few walls, maybe mid or bot, and mm -hmm. uh, I think that's about it. Mm -hmm. Here's one wall. And um, I don't think they, they can actually get the keep. Like they're pushing aggressively for the keep. I mean, yeah, Hammer, but, Hammer I mean, does give them the, the, dragon here. the siege potential. Um, I mean, I'm I, not saying. I don't even think Hammer should be sieging here. Like uh, he he does no more damage to single targets. Like he can poke, but that's that's it. They got yeah. half the keep. I mean, that's pretty decent. They got level twenty. Uh, I, I think they should be satisfied here. Without picks, I mean, it's pretty hard to do much more. I do feel like they should have focused a little bit more on the bot king because uh, I feel like that one is more important because it's much easier to siege and come from the bot keep uh, if everything is open mm -hmm. than the mid one. But I mean, you, you get what you take. You take what you get. <laughs> yeah, just to be clear, uh, Hammer does deal more damage to structures and, and minions in siege mode. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, obviously. That. So if you're pushing into the keep, there is a reason to be sieging for that. Uh, but it, it, yeah, you're right, it doesn't do more damage to any heroes. Uh, Torn into Smash again on the mount, uh, and the unfortunately for him... Oh wow, the Gul'dan goes down though. Um, he did cancel Ice Block before the Horrify landed, uh, but that's a blow up on the Oriel. The mouth uh, CC into the Twilight Dream is going to get that kill. Rag here uh, also going to fall, and that's three men dead. Uh, on Natus Dominari. Falstead's still bugged. I mean, this is level 20. You know, we're, we're nearly 20 minutes into the game. Uh, they can they can just kill a keep here. Yeah, they, they should be able to kill a keep here with uh, with good siege power or hammer. It's pretty good at defending those. Yeah, so but once you've opened up the wall, be. she's got to be a lot more careful. Especially against yeah, that Anubarak. Uh, They've got 20 seconds. Keep. They might be able to end here. I don't think they can end unless no, they get the pick, but, but definitely keep is, is gone. So they do pick oh, up the keep successfully. Them, yeah. yeah, very nicely done. They're going to pull back now. Um, going to take the siege camp because they've they know they've still got a few more seconds um, of uh, advantage. Now, one thing I will say is the alts on Natus Dominari are all back up. Uh, they've obviously got a couple of low cooldown alts, um, but also even the longer cooldown alts they've got, Horrify and Aegis, are much shorter cooldowns than the long cooldowns on the side of Falstead Still Bugged. So, um, so only, only uh, actual talent that I'm uh, interested in picking is uh, Demoralizing Shout. Yeah. From Varian. You usually yeah, yeah. see the healing banner with the cooldown reduction, the but uh, interesting pick here. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's it reduces the blow up potential. Um, yeah, yeah, that, that's true, but uh, I mean, the um, Fast and Steel Bug doesn't have that much blow up potential. With Tastar, they have long sustained fights. Not I mean, really. Uh, sure, they have been yeah, showing I mean, it, it was some, some CC chain blow ups. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the ETC and Uberak is just, uh, as some people would say, pretty disgusting. Yes, <laughs> yeah. So, I, I can understand it. Um, I think in in a burstier fight, it does more than the banner. 
uh, than the banner upgrade, but we shall see how that plays out for them. Um, we do have the blink along with Mosh on the ETC, so that's... Yeah, see, now this, this is kind of just a waste of time. Fossil's still bugged again for this top four. Doesn't really get them anything useful. Um, Red team has destroyed a fort. And they've I mean, actually left it's their key. You have to grind at level 22, I mean. Pardon? <laughs> yeah, you, you have to grind at level 22, sure. though. It's an important comment spike. <laughs> uh, so, Molten Core coming down for Rag here. She's going to force the disengage, I think, from. Oh dear, Tass getting massively knocked down. That is a blow up that is going to finish off the Tass. The Rag in Molten Core and the Hammer are going to make short work of that keep. They look like they're considering I trying to end, but I don't think they can really here. I don't think they can end with optics, oh. and this is very risky, because who wins the next Dragon fight, uh, Dragon Knight definitely wins the game, I think. Uh, yeah, almost certainly. Both teams now have uh, an open opening into core. Um, so the Aegis, not oh, enough to save down. Yoriel. She does go down. This is a 4v5 fight that so far uh, Falstead still bugged are winning. Uh, Rag walks back into the laser range and is going to fall, but Gul'dan is going to pick off the Tychus and going to start work on the mouth as well. Come Tanks, on, Fiesta. Yeah, a little bit. Just a little bit. Uh, so that was a 2 for 1 in favour of Falstad still bugged uh, when they were a man down. So pretty impressive by them to uh, to achieve that, um, and it will give them a significant advantage on the map over the next few moments. Uh, they've got about thirty. Yeah, the map definitely looks orange, uh, sort of red right now. Yeah, um, and it looks like blind. there's not going to be any attempt to interrupt. Falstead still bug pick up the Dragon Knight, and as we said earlier, that could just be game. This... I mean. This is most likely game. I mean, this There's is an a open core and a 23 minute Dragon minute, Knight. Yeah, we, we all know that uh, core increases in health until 20th minute and then stops. So everything after that scales significantly higher than the core, and the Dragon can literally just walk up to it and uh, right click and, and win. Yeah. Uh, not going to do so though, apparently. Just going to wander around a little bit. Uh, chat asking Oriol stacks, Reservoir of Hope. Bonus storage is up to 600 at this stage. No oh, wow, it's pretty solid. Well, I mean, it's pretty late in the game, so not super surprised by that. Yeah, I guess maybe they didn't want to try and push in bot in case Rag uh, Molten Cord on the keep behind them. Uh, the dead keep behind them, perhaps. Now that is burnt, they still have got 30 seconds on the Dragon Knight, and it's still very nearly full health. They are going to make a push yeah, in the against five and on the mount. Again gets caught. But he does Would get the... Oh, Sulfurous so smash oh, yeah, down to the end of the... And the Dragon is on the core. Yeah, Dragon is on the core, uh, chunking it down. Hammer falls pretty low, but he's going to be okay. Uh, we've got the Archon up for... Um, Tass here. Core's on 30%. Oh, that's that's, that's, that that's is going to be point. it. The, the Dragon Knight should be able to finish this off. Good game. Game number two in the series goes over to Falstad, still bugged. They will even the series up and tie it one to one.